In this section, we'll talk about another group and its excretory organs. And that group is of platyhelminth. These platyhelminths, this group includes planaria, liver flukes or lung flukes, and tapeworm, that is tinea solium, tape worms and they are basically called flat worms because their body is absolutely flat. The excretory material, they can be free living like planaria or they could be endoparasites like fluke or tapeworm. So the excretory material is ammonia and the excretory organ or structure, excretory organ or structure because here it's a simple cell that's why is flame cell now the reason why they are called flame cells once we understand the structure it would be clear to us these excretory organs are also known as protonephridia now protonephridia term is given when the excretory system has no internal opening so here excretory system or cells or organs have no internal opening. Now how without this internal opening the material is excreted out. So we'll see the structure of flame cell and that would help us understand what exactly we mean by this protonephridia and why are these cells called the flame cells. Now these flame cells, there is one more term which is given to these flame cells. They are also known as solenocytes. So if we have to draw the structure of a flame cell, the cell is going to be something like this. A narrow tube here and the cell is going to open into so here on the outer side the surface is slightly irregular and this is the cell so this is one cell that we have drawn the outer side is slightly irregular and this side is in the body cavity or the space from where the waste material is to be collected. Here is going to be the nucleus and this complete structure would be termed as the flame cell. Now as we said, why is it known as flame cell? The reason is here in this opening there are present many cilia and these cilia they move together in the same way and it appears like flickering of the flame. So when these cilia move together, they are present in a tuft. And when they move together, the appearance is like flickering of a flame. And that is why these cells are known as flame cells. So these are basically the cilia which are moving. So from outside, the nitrogenous waste, that is ammonia, is collected and by these cells. This ammonia is directed or conducted with, by their movement into this tube and this tube is going to open out. Now here we have drawn only one flame cell but there can be many such flame cells. This is one. Now if we draw just one more, here is going to be another flame cell. And this cell will again pour its secretion into this duct. This duct is going to open out through excretory pore. So this duct is known as excretory duct. So suppose if we draw that here it opens out. Say this is the opening. So it is going to open out but there is no internal opening. The waste material is being collected by the cells. So there is a network of these cells. They keep collecting the waste from the surrounding. So the waste that is ammonia is collected and it is poured here and this excretory duct takes it out of the body. But we don't see any internal opening and that is why 
This excretory system or structure is known as protonephridia. Protonephridia, there is an external opening but no internal opening. That is uh, called protonephridia. And the reason why these cells are called flame cells, because the cilia, when they move, their movement looks like flickering of flame. So here we make it, we went right. The movement of cilia looks like flickering of flame. And that is why the term flame cells. Now, if we are talking of free living ones and if they are in fresh water, then there is another problem that is excess of water which is coming in. So, in fresh or in aquatic, what we can say, free living, free living, aquatic, flatworms, there are more number of flame cells, more flame cells and they excrete dilute urine. They excrete dilute urine. And the reason why this urine is becoming dilute because they are in aquatic medium and due to endoosmosis more and more water is coming in. So here flame cells are helping in removal of the nitrogenous waste that is ammonia. But it has to remove that extra water also and that is also done with the, by these flame cells. So they are removing nitrogenous waste plus helping in osmoregulation. And that is why the urine which is excreted out is dilute as compared to the endoparasites. So here we are see, saying that free living would have more flame cells and would excrete dilute urine as compared to endoparasites. Endoparasites that is the liver fluke kind of organisms or the tapeworms like tinea solium kind of organisms because here entry of that extra water conditions do not exist. So in free living more number of flame cells and the urine excreted out would be more dilute containing ammonia. So waste remains ammonia that means they are ammonotelic and the organ, excretory organ are known as the flame cells. So material is this and the cells are called flame cells. So this is the excretory structure in platyhelminths or flatworms. In the next segment we will take the excretory organs which are found in nematodes or a roundworm kind of organisms. We will now take up the next group and see the excretory structures. So the group that we are talking of is of nematodes. That is, we are talking of Aschihelminthus group or Nematihelminthus group where the example is of roundworms that is Ascaris. In Ascaris, Ascaris is an endoparasite. So in them there is again the special type of structure, excretory structure. So here, excretory structure are called rennet cells. They are called rennet cells and sometimes the system of excretion is known as H-shaped system or H-shaped excretory system. Now we will understand why this alphabet H shape is given to this system once we draw it. And the excretory material. So excretory material is one ammonia and second ammonium ions. These ammonium ions are excreted out through the body surface. So that this elimination takes place by or through body surface. Whereas, elimination of ammonia and water takes place by this rennet cell or this H-shaped system. Now, these rennet cells, there are very few cells present in this because these are endoparasites. And 
the shape is like alphabet H. So let us draw the shape. Here is the cell body and arising from the cell body is an R which is going upward. There is an opening here. Then from the cell body there are some transverse ducts and these transverse ducts they make a network and there are two posterior ducts like this and ducts in the sense they are not opening these are just projections and here also there is a tube there is no opening here and this one goes up and here also there is a branch so the shape looks like alphabet H. This is the cell body which has the nucleus. So this exactly is the cell that we are talking of. And by looking at the diagram, the shape appears like H, alphabet H. And that is why it is also known as H system. Let us label these things. This duct or this arm is known as the main excretory duct because there is an opening at the tip. This opening is the excretory pore. This arm is anterior arm. So it is known as the anterior excretory arm. These lower ones and as you can see these three they don't have any opening. The opening is present only in one and these two they are known as the posterior arms or posterior excretory ducts. Posterior excretory ducts. They are also known as posterior longitudinal ducts as they are lengthwise arranged. So there is one more term posterior longitudinal ducts. And this network which is in the middle is known as the network of transverse ducts. So this part is a network of transverse ducts. So this is one rennet cell and there are few rennet cells in the body of a scabs. So what are these transverse ducts going to do? They are going to collect the waste from the surrounding. Even the posterior and the anterior ducts, they are also going to do the same thing. We have written it as arm. It is also known as duct. They are also going to collect the waste. And all this waste with the help of this main excretory duct would be poured out. And these openings, the excretory pores, they are present on the underside of the body near pharynx. So this is where the elimination of the nitrogenous waste is going to take place. Now, scientists believe that these rennet cells, this is something which we need to understand. Here we are talking of them as excretory structures. But most scientists believe that their main function is removal of water This is their main function and this secondary function is excretion and the secondary function is excretion. But as Ascaris is an endoparasite, there is no such condition where there would be excess of water coming in. But this is what most of the scientists believe. But this is the structure which is also helping in removal of ammonia and that is why we take them as excretory structures. Otherwise the other excretory product that is ammonium ions they are removed by the body surface by the process of diffusion. So two uh, Substances which are eliminated, ammonium ion through body surface and ammonia through rennet cells. And because of the shape of this rennet cells, this excretory system is also known as H-shaped excretory system. So this is seen in case of nematodes, that is the members of Aschihelminthes or Nematihelminthes. The name is rennet cell and 
and this alphabet is given because of the shape of the cell. Now the next group would be of anilida that we will discuss in the next segment.